Chapter 15 I heard crying when I went upstairs. It was coming from behind the closed door of Rachel's room. I knocked at her door, and the weeping noise stopped. Can I come in? Wait a second, my sister answered. I could hear the tears in her voice. Okay, come in. She was sitting up on her bed, and her red eyes squinted at me. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right, she said. He attempted a weak little smile, and then she burst into tears again. I rushed over and wrapped my arms around her, but this only forced more sobs out of her, and she became louder, much louder. Rachel, Danny rushed into the room. What's going on? He looked at me accusingly, like I was the one who was causing her distress. I shrugged. Danny threw an arm around her as well. She tried to answer his question, but it sounded like a jumbled combination of sobs and mismatched syllables that I couldn't understand. But Danny seemed to. Dad is going to be okay, right, Adam? He asked. Yeah, of course. But, but, he's alone, Rachel howled, and then dissolved into more sobs. He's not alone, I said. He has his whole flight crew with him. There are a bunch of them, including his co-pilot, the engineer, and all of the flight attendants. They're all together. Plus, they have all the staff and crew at the airport down there to help them. That's right, Danny said. His face showed relief and I realized that I wasn't just trying to ease Rachel's fears. I'm sure they're all taking care of each other, I said. Really? she asked. He's probably just worried about us, I said. But why would he be worried about us? Rachel asked. I'd gone too far. I didn't need her to be anxious about what was happening here. You know how he is, I said. He's always worried about us, even when we're safe. And when there's nothing to worry about. We're completely safe. I emphasized the words I wanted her to hear. That's what Herb did. And then I tried to distract them with a chore. I need your help, guys. I want you both to get up, grab some breakfast, and then go down to Mullet Creek, get some water so we can flush the toilets. I don't know why we need to go down to the creek when we have a whole pool of water in the backyard, Danny complained. Because Herb told us that's what we should do. Is Herb in charge? Danny questioned. Of course not. He just knows some things from his job. He said that pool water is best to use for drinking, even when it has to be retreated. It's still more pure. How about if I go with you two to get the water? That'll be easier. I guess I'd have to find a chance to sleep later. That would be nice, Rachel said. She used her sleeve to wipe away the tears. Get dressed, eat, and then the three of us will go together. It'll be fun. Danny shook his head. Fun isn't what it used to be. We each carried two buckets. I figured six would be enough to flush the toilets for the whole day. Even without clean water coming in through the pipes, the toilet still worked. It was simple gravity. If you poured water into the tank and then flushed, sending the contents of the bowl down the sewage pipes leading away from our house and toward the treatment plant and the lake beyond. I knew that no treatment was taking place. I couldn't help but think what the effect would be of all that sewage flowing untreated into the lake. But right now, I was more concerned about it sitting in our toilets if we didn't flush it. We weren't alone walking for water. People who had always relied on water coming through their taps were now reduced to scooping water from the two creeks that ran through our neighborhood. Lots of people were either headed down to Mullet Creek or coming back up. You could see the strain in the arms and the faces of those returning as they carried overflowing containers of water. We nodded or said hello to people as we passed. There were many people who looked familiar, but not that many I really knew. Of course, I knew some of the kids from school or soccer or baseball, but I was almost shocked by how few people I did know when it came right down to it. And it wasn't just people a street or two over, but neighbors right on my street whom I'd never gotten to know before this. The last few days, I'd seen people standing in front of their houses. I'd even joined a couple of conversations. Normally, they were just little heads visible through their car windows as they raced past my house. Then they were either gone around the corner or disappeared into their garage and then into the house through an interior door so that they never needed even to appear in the outside world. We came along the walking path that ran behind the houses and cut through the electrical tower field to the closest little creek. It was hidden by a thin curtain of trees and weeds. Other paths cut through the brush, leading down to the water, 
A couple of kids ahead of us went down one path carrying their pails, and almost immediately, a woman emerged carrying a bucket. She nodded to us as we passed. She was familiar looking, but again, I had no idea who she really was. This is like the nursery rhyme, Danny said. How do you figure that? I asked. Isn't it obvious? Rachel asked. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and... We're going down the hill. Nobody is breaking anything. And only another twin would think it was obvious, I said. There were half a dozen people already at the creek. But where was all the water? The creek, which was never big, except after a rain, was flowing even less than normal. What happened? I asked. <clears throat> there was more water yesterday, Rachel said. It wasn't like usual, but it was much more than this. There was just a small trickle of water inching its way past the rocks at the bottom. People were gathered around the depressions where water was still pooling. They were using cups to scoop it up and then dump it into their water pail jugs and pails. We hadn't brought any cups. Maybe I could use one of the pails as a scoop. We squatted down and I sank the pail into the shallow water, using it like a ladle and then pouring it into one of the other pails. You know what this reminds me of? Danny asked. Now what? I can't even imagine, I said. It's like one of those commercials, kids sitting in the dirt with no water in sight. You know, those international charities that sponsor children. Maybe we can get somebody to sponsor Rachel. At least somebody would sponsor me, she said. I laughed, even though I knew this wasn't something to joke about. If this creek dried up, where would we get water from? What if this situation did go on for four more days, or four weeks, or four months? I guess we could start to draw water from the pool. It was clean and chlorinated. We could drink it, which was why we shouldn't be wasting it on the toilet. Was that why Herb didn't want us to use that water for flushing? Because he thought it could go on that long? Then I thought about Lori's farm. They had water, lots of clean, fresh drinking water. I could bring out some containers, and that would be my excuse to go back. Slowly, we filled up the first five pails and then scooped out as much as we could into the sixth. That would be enough. We trudged back up the slope and along the path to our house. There were more people heading down for water. Was that, that what had happened to the flow? Were so many people in this neighborhood and others from upstream drawing water out of the little stream, pail by pail, that they were draining it? Was that even possible? But what else could it be? Wow. Look at that, Danny said. I turned. On the horizon was a thick black cloud rising into the sky. That has to be some big fire, Rachel said. Did it just start, or did we notice it, Danny asked. I'm not sure. Where do you think it is? I shook my head. I don't think it's close. It looks like it's north of Eglinton. But really, it could be farther and bigger. There's no way of knowing. You could drive there, Danny said. You could drive us there. I'm not driving us anywhere. Let's get home. Mom is coming home today, right? Rachel asked. Right. And when she comes home, she might even know about this fire. What are you carrying? Rachel asked. This would be water, I said, holding up one of the pails. I meant under your shirt. Nothing. Come on, get busy. The pistol in its holster made a bulge under my jacket. I pulled my stomach in so that the gun was less visible. I knew I should have left it hidden under my bed as long as I was in the neighborhood, but I just felt better with it on me. As uncomfortable as it, is, as it was to have it, I still felt more comfortable carrying it. Herb must really be getting to me. It certainly looks like something, Danny said. Maybe once the electricity comes back on, you can both have your eyes checked. That's not on top of my, on the top of my list of things. That's not on the top of my list once things go back to normal, Danny said. What is on that list? I asked. Moving away from the original topic, I slowed down slightly to allow them to get just a little in front of me. I didn't want them to have another chance to look at the bulge under my jacket. Ice cream, a cold Coke, video games, and air conditioning, he said. Fair enough. It was hot last night, especially for late April. I'm just glad this didn't happen during the summer, Danny said. You're right. It would be a lot hotter, I said. And we wouldn't be in school. You're not in school now, I pointed out. Exactly, but it's better to be missing school. I'd like to admit, I don't like to admit it, but he has a point, Rachel agreed.
but I like school. Well, at least I like my friends from school. You still have friends from the neighborhood, I said, but I want all my friends. Other than Todd, I hadn't really talked to many people my own age except Lori, and I was going to see her again. I just needed a reason. Would it make you happy to go horseback riding again? I asked Rachel. Silly question. I smiled at the eager expression on her face and assured her I'd ask mom as soon as I got a chance. That night, I was restless. After spending the whole rest of the day with the twins, trying to amuse them with endless board games, I had felt stuck inside. I lit a candle and read for a bit, but the whole time I worried that I was wasting the candle on a story that wasn't very good. So I finally just lay in bed in the dark, listening to the complete quiet, wondering what was happening out there.